Today's video is an absolute cracker for you. We're talking about why you slice your driver, but you hit the baby fade with your irons. I got so many people that come down to me and tell me this, I thought it'd be interesting to do a video. So we're going to do it with the flight scope. We're also going to do it by hitting a driver and a seven iron, explain the data, explain another bonus reason why, and right at the end of the video, this is something that you've never, never thought of before. You could do this drill that stops you slicing it at home. Okay, at home, doesn't need a golf club, just need a little bit of space around you. Stick around to the end of the video to find out that. So I am down here on the fourth hole at the beautiful Pineros Altos golf course. Look at this tee shot. Slight like dog leg down to the right, down into the canopies. It is a beautiful place to bring you today's video. Welcome to today's video. If you are a brand new viewer, welcome to Alex Elite Golf. This is a channel that gives you fun, entertainment, but as well as some instruction that's gonna help raise the level of your game. Today we're talking about slice with both of these clubs, but why we can control this and why we ultimately can't control the driver. So on this channel, we bring you content on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and on Sundays, and you're watching Sunday's content. So be sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button down below. So today I've got an interesting question for you. If you are a brand new viewer, get involved in all these questions because over the year we have giveaways that's gonna help you get better stuff for your golf and ultimately enjoy your golf more. Now, today's video, I want to know what driver you're currently gaming for the 2020 season. I'm gonna be on the SZ, the new Cobra one, waiting for it to come in and stick around for that fitting as well. That's going to be some content that's going to be coming up on the channel. So without further ado, we've got the flight scope down here and this is going to tell you the real reason why you cut this, but you slice this. So the first thing we can establish if you're someone who cuts the golf ball with the irons and slices their ball with the driver, that we have a club path that is traveling to the left of target, okay? And a face that is open to our path causing the spin axis to be tilted, causing the ball to go to the right. Now, without going into too much detail, ultimately we look at the D plane which causes our curvature, the difference between our face and our path in one respect and our angle of attack and our club face dynamic loft. But if we look at it in its simplest form, the difference between the way, way which we're swinging the club path and the face is pointing will, will make the ball go in different directions. So if we've got a club path that's traveling to the left and we've got a club face that's pointing to the right, that is gonna cause us to have a curvature. Now, I'm gonna hit two shots here, one with the seven iron and one with driver, and hopefully have them roughly around the same degrees left of target with the path and same degrees open. And I want you to notice the major difference in terms of the spin axes. And this is the real reason why you could be slicing your driver and you could be fading your irons. There's also around at the end of the video, another reason why, and that's probably one of the reasons why I want you to stick around to right at the end of the video, because it's, it, it's something that we don't tend to think of in any single golf shot. Okay, so I've got my seven iron here. I'm gonna play a cut shot, and I'm gonna see what my club path is, and then I'm gonna try and replicate the same sort of impact factors, and let's see the difference in what happens to the spin axis. Okay. So let's hit this one away. My target's down the middle of the fairway. I'm going to try and hit a cut shot. Okay, that is the cut shot. We're looking at on the flight scope data here. You can see that that ball had a curvature from left to right. Finished left the target, but had a curvature of left to right. So you can see here I've got a club path that was nine degrees to the left and a face that was three degrees open. Not a bad shot, one that would probably finish on target and not far, not far from the green to be honest, it's, it's going to be on the green. So if we slide all the way across here to the spin axis, you can see here it's a 6.0 to the right. Remember that number because now I'm about to hit a shot with the driver which will really, will hopefully show you the real reason why you're slicing that but you can fit some nice baby fades with the irons. As with the goal with all my videos, it's here to help educate you, play better golf, and start enjoying your golf more. So if you can understand the reason why you could be slicing this, not get too hung up about it, and the real reason why you fade the irons, it's gonna be a real gold mine moment because I think a lot of people think they swing the driver drastically different to how they swing an iron, and they try and manipulate the golf club, they try and change exactly what they're doing, when really, 
it's just actually the physics is what happened in an impact and your swing is pretty much the same. So it's now time to see what I can do with the driver. Remember, I'm looking for similar impact factors and we're looking to see what the difference in the spin axis and what happens there. Okay, let's see if I can produce something similar. It's now time to have a look at the data. So you can see here, club path, which is very, very similar, 7.5 degrees to the left. A face that was 1.5 degrees right, so open to our path. But look at the spin axis number now. So remember, we had a club path that wasn't as far left as my 7-iron, and a face that wasn't as open as it was to my 7-iron. But look how much more the spin axis points to the right. Meaning that, as soon as we get less loft in our hand, the drastic effect on our spin, so the, what we're seeing in curvature left to right, is super over exaggerated. So this is something you've really got to bear in mind, the fact that when you reduce loft, it's a lot easier to tilt that spin axis either way, and in our case here, to the right of target. And that's going to cause the ball to go to the right. Really nice shot that, but it's, it's, it's something that is really key for you to understand. Not beat yourself up over, because it's actually happening in, what, in terms of what's happening at the ball. And you could put very similar swings on between your irons and actually end up on the green, and similar to your driver, and end up slicing it way right at target. That one actually finished on target. It's a shot that I'm comfortable with. But very often we see similar, similar numbers to this and face that's more open to this. Whew, and that ball goes way off to the right. And then the information behind this video is that as, as we get less loft, it's easier to tilt the spin axis. That's all we need to know. The final part of this video, I want to explain to you about strike. So the final part of this video, we're talking about strike. Now, a lot of people have strike issues when they get to the driver. And because when all these driver manufacturers, when they produce them, they want to make these drivers as forgiving as possible, we have a certain amount of gear effect in this driver. So if you're someone who's striking it towards the heel, this will cause the heel to kick back and the ball to curve in the opposite direction. Imagine like cogs and gears, they work in the opposite direction. So the final part, this reason why you could be slicing your driver and actually fading your irons could be down to where you're striking the driver on the face. But the main thing in this video that I wanted to get across to you is that you could put two very similar swings on with the driver to an iron. Like you saw there, I actually didn't have a club path that was as to the left and a face that wasn't as open, but you saw the spin axis tilt more. So straight away, as we reduce the loft, it's easier to get this ball to spin in either direction. So don't beat yourself up. Realise that it's actually what's happening down at the golf ball, the physics of golf, that's actually causing your ball to move in that direction. Now, if you are somebody who slices your driver uncontrollably, I want to finish off this video by giving you a really simple tip and a simple feeling to how we can get that face a little bit more towards neutral, and then we can stop slicing that driver as much down the fairway. So this is the final part of the video that's going to help you get that face closer towards neutral. And it doesn't involve a golf club. You can do this right at home. So if you're at home now watching this video, stand up out of your chair and give this a go. So I want you to get into golf posture. Most people that slice the golf ball, they will have a face that's open and they will train a face that's open. So if we can do the opposite, I want your thumbs to be pointing down. I want you to move them together like so. You can see, you can see there, zoomed in there, that I've got them clasped together thumbs pointing out. I want you to make some moves now where we start to tilt and tip the thumbs over. So if you've got a bucket of water on the end, point the thumbs to the left. So if we put that relative to target now, point the thumbs to the left. Really get a feeling of releasing the golf club as opposed to holding that face open. And we'll start to see the golf ball get a little bit more under control, reduce that spin off to the right, and we start to hit more fairways. Thank you for watching today's video. If you are a brand new viewer, remember this is a channel that helps you enjoy your golf, golf entertainment, as well as improving it too. Thank you, see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.